Ladies and gents, it's that time again. I want to talk about our favorite nepotism baby, Hasanabi. I gotta start by saying thank you, okay? Anytime I feel like I don't have enough content, I think, who can I cover? Who can I talk about? Who's a freak that might be saying some stupid shit? And without fail, Hasanabi has always provided the goods. I, I have to say thank you. So, Again, Hasanabi, I appreciate you. So, what did Hasanabi do this time? Well, let's talk about it. Now, if you guys aren't aware, which apparently half of his audience isn't either, uh, he's in Australia right now doing IRL streams. Now, as you've heard that, you're probably thinking, Hasanabi, IRL streams? This motherfucker is known for either doing political streams or sit- Oh, sorry, not even sitting at his desk, but rather just putting something on, playing it for his audience, and then leaving to either take a shit or prepare some food, or even get some Uber Eats that was left at his door. Obviously, if I made some videos about fucking curling, you guys probably wouldn't watch them, just in the same way that Hasanabi's audience does not really give a fuck about what Hasanabi does when he's not talking about politics or somebody else's content. And this wound, this issue he has with his audience is self-inflicted, because when you exclusively do one sort of content for an extended period of time, your audience is going to get normalized to that piece of content. You hear that, freaks? That's why I cover subjects that I care about in between the Minecraft slop that I give you. Now, mind you, while this guy is molding about declining viewership, he is still pulling over 10,000 concurrent viewers on Twitch. Uh, if I hit 10k on a video, a video which is being fed through the algorithm, a video which you can watch at any time, I'd be very happy. So the fact that 10,000 people all at once, at the same time, regardless of where they live on the planet, is watching you? That's insane. But of course, Hasanabi has to complain. So we're gonna go through the DMs that were leaked out of his Discord. <laughs> I'm so sad. I think the streams are bangers, but people just don't see them. We used to be a community. I hate what my community is becoming. I swear Twitch isn't about the actual content. It's about whether people want to pay attention to you or not, and clout. All that shit was banger, and 13k watched, like I'm fucking gaming at 8pm. Could you imagine, could you imagine for half a second complaining about 13k concurrent viewers watching you, caring about what you do, a type of content that you don't normally do, a type of content that has nothing to do with why you got famous in the first place. You know, you would think that the socialist wouldn't care so much about the fucking numbers. Oh wait, well, hmm. while money is probably one of the main concerns, I'll also say I think ego is the biggest concern. To start with, Hasanabi has always had a leg up on the competition. His initial introduction to the internet was through TY fucking T. Forget about growing up rich. Imagine wanting to be a content creator and your fucking uncle owns a media company. And I think that's where these issues begin because this person's never been a zero sub Andy. He's never been somebody who is making content to no one. That's an experience that many YouTubers have, my, myself included. Most of my videos got no views at the beginning because A, I didn't know how to make good content. I didn't know. I didn't know how to keep the audience's attention. I didn't know what to even talk about. So obviously, at the very beginning, you're not going to pull very many viewers, and that's a humbling experience, especially when me, as somebody who's been doing this for seven years, has really only started getting any amount of views recently. Now imagine instead you get to be a personality on a YouTube channel that has over a million subscribers. Yeah, a bit of a different experience. So of course, this guy's career has basically been a relative incline, and this is the first sign, the first experience of a true decline. Now obviously, come November, he'll gain all of this viewership back if not immediately when he returns to Australia doing his normal content, but he doesn't have those views right now. And right now, he's suffering, clearly, by these DMs. But there's something more insidious, and I think there's something that bothers him more than anything. Not only bothers him, but frightens him. I think it really hits his ego more than anything I've mentioned thus far. This formerly blue-haired black woman has been gaining subs and views steadily over the course of his career and is entirely the reason why the former TYT host is now a streamer. Destiny and Hasanabi used to make a lot of content together, used to live stream together, used to hang out together all the time. And both sides of that broken relationship will give you different stories as to why it ended. But regardless of why it ended, since Destiny got banned from Twitch and has been full-time streaming on YouTube, his channel has continued to grow and his concurrent viewers continue to increase. Hasanabi is the guy that used to pull 30k concurrent. What's happening? Used to pull 40, 50, used to pull as many as he wanted. I mean, if you want an easy example, 
example, Destiny is pulling 8.6k concurrent doing immigration research. And with Destiny going out and debating guys like Norm Finkelstein or, or even having interviews with Ben Shapiro on the Lex Friedman show, we're seeing Destiny interact with different audiences and kind of entering the mainstream while Hasanabi has really never interviewed or, or even interacted with people that don't share his views in one way or another. And I'm not saying that that's necessarily a bad thing, but don't be surprised when your audience becomes an echo chamber that really only wants to see one style of content. I'm done. I hate this job. I'm not streaming today. And this is my favorite one. I'm going to redact myself. Look, I'm not going to say that content creation is easy. Um, it's not the hardest job, obviously, because it's very rewarding and both financially, but also because you feel like you're doing something that you care about. One thing that's been really good for me is I really like making YouTube videos. Like, I'm very excited when I wake up in the morning to look up topics that I want to talk about today. I, I like I like that routine. It's something that I enjoy. I love making content. And something that I hope doesn't happen to me, but clearly has happened to Hasanabi, is this entitlement. This entitlement to viewership. This feeling that viewers owe you something. In reality, viewers don't really owe you anything. That The truth is that you're supposed to be entertaining them. That's what the content creation thing is. You're supposed to provide value. That's something that people love to say nowadays. Uh, and, and it's true. If you're like a fitness influencer, you're supposed to provide fitness value, I guess. You're trying to show them or motivate them or or explain to them educate them what you do if you're an entertainer you, you try to entertain the audience you know there's different ways of providing value and obviously Hasanabi's audience don't think that the Australian content he's producing is very valuable and obviously I say that pretty jokingly because he's getting 13,000 concurrent viewers but he still will find a way to complain the funniest part about this is that viewers are noticing that he is absolutely molding his viewers his fans his fans are noticing this and they're kind of getting sick of it I mean look at this I wish Hassan would stop stressing over his viewer count. I'm writing this because of the messages he sent in Discord yesterday saying that he was disappointed that his IRL streams in Australia had lower viewership. Those messages, cropped and out of context, ended up on Twitter slash Reddit, and there are absolutely disgusting viral tweets slash Reddit posts dunking on him for that. But this is not the first time he's complaining about this, which is annoying to me. Not gonna lie, it's a big turnoff when streamers complain about viewership. Just build strong relationships with who you have there and stop stressing about who's not. He needs to stop doing this and come to terms with the fact that his viewers watch him mainly for political coverage and don't really like IRL gaming content. Even back when he averaged 30k plus, he always had way less viewers when he did IRL slash fun gaming. This is nothing new, it is what it is, like be thankful that thousands of people are still willing to watch you when you're doing fun content. And this viewer is absolutely correct, while 13,000 people are watching him concurrently, he's thinking about nothing else but the 17,000 that should be watching him also. And while I understand that it's easy to get normalized to bigger and bigger numbers, obviously if you're used to pulling 30 and you start pulling 10, it's going to feel a bit weird. Ultimately, it's on you to adjust and adapt. If your content's not good enough to pull 30, then you have to change up your content. And if you're going to do content that doesn't appeal to 30, then you have to be comfortable with 10. That's just a reality of content creation. Talking about my channel as an example, I mean, I know that these MCYT videos are going to pull 13 k or 19k 16k they're gonna pull these big numbers but then you have a video about destiny a video that i cared about only pulls 1.5k a video about better help uh only pulls 5.7k a video about illumination only pull, pulls 6.2k but the reality is these are videos that i care about these are topics that i'm interested in these are topics that i want to cover for you guys and so regardless of the viewership i'm going to make those videos because i want to make those videos and i think that the issue is some people get so caught up into appealing to viewership that they forget to make content that they care about that they forget to do things that they want to do because ultimately an audience is a reflection of you it's a reflection of what you make and if you make stuff that you don't care about well you're gonna have an audience that cares about stuff that you don't care about you know Hasanabi's 32 he'll be turning 33 this year and, and I really wonder when he'll stop associating his self-worth with the amount of viewers he gets I think the second that you start relying on external sources for internal validation you start playing a really really dangerous game that doesn't really lead anywhere positive but yeah ladies and gents that's it for today I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and if you did leave a like comment and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video